So uh, if you would please open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 20. If you're using one of the red Bibles in the pew rack in front of you, it's on page 118. This will be the second week that we've talked about a Sabbath rest. And today we come to one of the Ten Commandments. I thought and prayed about this series and mentioned it to LaVon last week, and she said, well, are you still going to be talking about the Sabbath on Labor Day? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I think I am. How very fitting. I believe that part of the labor movement has its roots in this commandment, that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. And while we celebrate Labor Day, please know that not everyone worldwide has this privilege. There are more than 70 million children around the world who work in hazardous conditions in agriculture, in mining, in domestic labor, and in other kinds of work that are unsafe and unhealthy. Seventy million children worldwide. So certainly the labor movement has more and more to do. But what I want to talk about is the Sabbath from its Christian or its Judeo-Christian roots. Why is Sabbath rest important? God set it up in the beginning in the book of Genesis. Moses literally put it in stone, as we'll see this morning. The prophets stressed it. Jesus fought the Pharisees about it. Paul taught about it. It's a very part of heaven, but we've lost its meaning. Whatever the Sabbath is, it is not just part of the weekend. And what we've lost, we need to recover. In the observant Jewish home, Sabbath is celebrated something like this. On Friday evening, a few minutes before sunset, the mother or wife of the household lights a candle, and a blessing called the Kadush is recited. And it is basically that part of the story from Genesis chapter 2 where the scriptures record that on for six days God labored and on the seventh he rested. And then they'll have a festive meal on Friday evening, another one early in the afternoon on Saturday, a final meal late in the afternoon, and then when you can see three stars after sunset on Sabbath, on Saturday, the Sabbath ends. It runs about 25 hours. I've never participated in a observant Jewish Sabbath celebration, but I would consider that an honor to do so. This morning, the context of our Scripture are the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm just wondering how long this film has stretched in its viewing history. How many of you have seen Cecil B. DeMille's classic, The Ten Commandments, starring Charlton Heston? Can I see your hands? All right, that's amazing. That's a good group. Forget Charlton Heston and Cecil B. DeMille's and what you saw on the screen because it wasn't bad, but let me read for you the prelude to the Ten Commandments, the run-up to what happened when God gave Moses these commands. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain, Mount Sinai, and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it with fire. The smoke 
billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. That is what the Ten Commandments were like. The ten most important commands the Old Testament records. And ours, I counted, is number four. Now, the Roman Catholic Church and Jewish people and the Protestant Church all number the Ten Commandments differently. We don't have them in the same order, but if you start at the end and count back up, everyone agrees that the Sabbath commandment is the fourth commandment. It's the longest of the ten. And I think, perhaps, it's the most difficult to keep. Follow along with me in your copy of God's Word, Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter nor your maidservant or uh, your manservant or maidservant nor your animals nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Jim Cross, would you please stand from where you are and ask a blessing on the reading of God's word? Amen. Thank you, Brother Jim. Focus with me, if you would, please, on a few of the key words of the commands. Remember. Remember the Sabbath. The Sabbath did not begin here with the Ten Commandments. It is remembering what has already happened. How in the creation story, God worked for seven days, and then he worked for six days, and then he rested on the seventh. Not only that, but when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness after they escaped from Egypt, in Exodus 16, this is what the Lord commanded, tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Even when they wandered in the wilderness, before they ever got to the Ten Commandments, they rested in their journey every seventh day. They were to remember what they had already been doing, and they were to keep it holy. Work the other six. The seventh belongs to God. Work six. Seventh. That's God's. I appreciate what Miss Jet had to say early in the service about holiness. Holiness doesn't mean we're better. Holiness doesn't mean we even, even do a better job of being moral people. It means we're set apart in all that we do for God's purposes. That's the idea behind the Sabbath day being a holy day. It's a day that has been set apart from all of the other ones. And the heart of the Sabbath is a Sabbath rest. Don't work. Don't make anyone else work. Not your kids, not your employees, not even your animals. Now, I know our animals don't really work anymore, right? But the idea is your oxen wouldn't be treading out uh, 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 grain or, or working a water wheel or something like that. They would not work. 
And the idea is God, who never needed to work, made an example. He labored for six days, and then he rested. It's a day of blessing. As we're going to see in the coming weeks as we talk about the New Testament, the Jewish people had made the Sabbath into a burden. It was never intended to be a burden, always to be a day of blessing. So how did it work practically? There's got to be exceptions. I mean, what do you do with your livestock? If you're in a, an agrarian society, the cows still got to be milked. They still have to be watered and fed. So there, there had to be some exceptions. Watering stock, if your ox fell in a well, you were permitted to pull it out. Oh, and your son too, by the way. If your son fell in a well, you were permitted to pull him out. Obviously, the priests in the temple didn't get the Sabbath off. That's why the long-standing and healthy practice of most churches and First Baptist Church is that your ministerial staff, certainly your full-time staff, get a weekday off because we labor on Sundays. This law was strict. Exodus 31.14, observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to, can you guess? Right, not put to work, put to death. This was, how well did the people keep this? In the Old Testament, not so much. Not so much. The prophets constantly complain about the lack of keeping the Sabbath. But eventually, this became the defining mark of Judaism. By the time you finish the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, and you pass through those 400 years to get to Matthew, the first of the New Testament, Sabbath was the mark of the Jewish people. They observed it so strictly and so carefully that it did not matter where they lived in the world. They were partially a set-apart people, a holy people, because they absolutely, positively refused to work on the Sabbath. It was part of what it meant to be Jewish. So, here we are, celebrating the Labor Day weekend. What should a Sabbath look like now? Once again, we're going to run at this from a New Testament perspective in the two weeks that are to come. But generally speaking, it should be holy, not dull restrictive, drab, or joyless? Sure, turn on the TV and watch a football game. That's okay. Just free from sin. Not that we're perfect, but free from anger, envy, selfishness, immorality. Things that we ought to avoid all the time, we ought to focus on being a set-apart people on the Sabbath. And like most Jewish festivals, it ought to be a feast day of joy and peace. Actually, most Jewish festivals included dancing, but I was afraid to put that in a Baptist church on the screen, so I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to say it. A day of joy. A day of worship, a day of blessing. What should a Sabbath look like? It should be different. Different from the rest of the week. Now, not different from Monday through Friday. Different from the rest of the week. Restful. 
wholesome, enjoyable, consistent, worshipful. You're doing that. You're doing that right now. Here in this service, we have sang hymns and praises together. We have prayed and we have read God's Word. You are doing right now what is intended to be done on the Sabbath. This is a time that is set apart. And you are doing the right thing. God bless you because you are a part of the Sabbath in this time. How important is the Sabbath? Well, here's the question. Will God give you a break from any of the other Ten Commandments? Can you just throw adultery out the window or lying or idol worship? Will God give you a buy on that? You can do those things, but I can promise you there are always consequences. It's important. It is not meant to restrict. It is meant to restore. And I believe it means as much now as it ever, ever did. Let's stand together.